first uh, serious uh, essay about the topic of humanitarian intervention term. It's 1859, the term doesn't used, wasn't used, but that's what it's about. Uh, this is an essay by uh, John Stuart Mill, and it's of particular significance not only because of its content, it is kind of the classical essay on the topic, but because of who he was. He was a man of uh, unusual uh, moral integrity, uh, intelligence, uh, pretty hard to match him. And it turns out that with a few changes of names, uh, the content of his essay could appear today, I think. Uh, don't want to, I'll, I'll quote you some of the central parts. I don't want to paraphrase. Uh, Mill, there was a view in England at the time, this is the late 1850s, that uh, England, which was of course the world's hegemonic power of the day, that England should uh, keep away from intervention uh, unless, I'm quoting him, unless its safety is threatened or any of its interests uh, hostily and unfairly are endangered. Uh, but uh, Mill objected to that standard view. He thought that was a mistake. And the reason was, he said, that England uh, is a novelty in the world. It's a remarkable nation that acts only in the service of others. It's dedicated to peace, but if the aggressions of barbarians force it to a successful war, uh, it selflessly bears the cost, while the fruits it shares in fraternal equality with the whole human race. That even includes the barbarians that it conquered for their own benefit. Uh, he does say that England has a fault, a misplaced modesty. That leads uh, Englishmen to abnegate the character which we might with truth lay claim to of being incomparably the most conscientious of all nations in our national acts. Uh, England is not only peerless, but near perfect. It has no aggressive designs. It desires no benefit to itself at the expense of others. Its policies are blameless and laudable. Uh, and he went on to say that England should not be deterred by the fact that it is held up to obloquy on the continent. Uh, incidentally, the thoughts of others outside the continent don't enter into this question, including those who uh, uh, Adam Smith uh, referred to long before uh, when he condemned the what he called the savage injustice of the Europeans, particularly the vile acts of the British in India, uh, but not by 1859. It's only that we, uh, England, uh, 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 receives uh, obloquy on the uh, continent, held up to obloquy on the continent. Uh, but he nevertheless said, despite this, uh, uh, England should be ready to intervene in the service of others, of course. Uh, however, its motives may be misrepresented by those who cannot believe the uh, magnificence that is before their eyes and attribute the cynical motives to the British. Uh, it's, he's a great philosopher. He went in to study the criteria for intervention. And he said it's permissible when dealing with barbarians those with a low degree of civilization, whose minds are not capable of comp comprehending rules, let alone observing them. These barbarians, which is essentially everyone outside of Europe, um, even outside of England, uh, they need the protection of a civilized power of Christian Europe, uh, particularly, of course, the noblest among them. Well, uh, uh, Mill was, it's interesting to look at the timing of when Mill was writing, it was 1859. That was right after the public exposure, very public exposure of Britain's vicious atrocities in India in suppressing what in British history is called the Indian Mutiny, a rebellion in India. Uh, this was, uh, I might tell you how uh, Jawaharlal Nehru described it in his History of India written from his prison cell. He was imprisoned by the British uh, he described it as uh, a ghastly and horrible picture showing man at his worst, uh, citing contemporary records, both British and Indian, which are quite accurate. Uh, this, incidentally, was not long after the Irish famine, 
horrible Irish famine in which the uh, England's role was not obscure. It was, it was also in the midst of the Second Opium War, that was 1856 to 1860. This is right in the middle of it when Mill was writing, and that had its own uh, horrors, uh, bombardment and, and deliberate burning down of uh, thousands of houses and densely settled the Canton, for example, with many killed. Now, that had caused such an uproar in England that uh, Parliament was dissolved and a new election was called, all of this shortly before Mill wrote. And of course, he knew all about it. He was an educated, literate person. He was also a, an official of the East India Company, which was right at the center of the atrocities in India. Uh, well, that's the context. Uh, in short, uh, we can say that uh, England was the 19th century counterpart of today's, I'm now quoting, today's idealistic new world bent on ending in humanity uh, in a noble phase of its foreign policy, uh, pursuing policies with a saintly glow, I'm quoting the New York Times, uh, leading commentators uh, in the 1990s, uh, the end of the 90s, the nation reached the height of its glory, uh, acting from altruism and moral fervor alone, it's a historian, David Frumkin, uh, dedicating itself for the first time in history to principles and values instead of self-interest, uh, Václav Havel, and thus uh, opening a new era of enlightenment, uh, very much like uh, England, the England that Mill was describing. Uh, well, uh, that uh, uh, raises some questions plainly. Uh, if that's the peak of uh, nobility of humanitarian intervention, exactly what is humanitarian intervention?